October 20th, 2015. Will you join me in the game for the pledge? Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Larry Armstrong? Here. Jacqueline Asbill? Here. Jay Fabian? Here. Michelle Hayes? Here. Kelly Tromba? Here. Larry Armstrong? Yes. Jay Fabian? Yes. Michelle Hayes? Yes. Kelly Tromba? Yes. Vote is 4 0. And they need approval of the minutes for the regular meeting September 1st, 2015. Can I get a motion? Second. Jay Fabian? Yes. Michelle Hayes? Yes. Kelly Tromba? Yes. Larry Armstrong? I abstain. Vote is 3 0 1. And approval for the minutes of the regular meeting, September 15th. I'll move again. Second. Roll call. Michelle Hayes? Yes. Kelly Tromba? Yes. Larry Armstrong? Abstain. Jay Fabian? Yes. Vote is 301. Thank you. This time it is available for the members of the audience if you have anything on the agenda items only. Recognize the speakers now. If anybody has anything to bring to the table? Okay. Any board rep member reports? It's been a little while, but I attended the uh, walkathon at the South Elementary uh, about three weeks ago, maybe. Very, uh, very well done by the PTA and all the volunteers and the kids. Uh, really enjoy the day outside, walking around the school, exercising, and different events they, uh, they got to do. So it was, it was a lot of fun participating in that. I just would like to acknowledge our homecoming weekend and how wonderful it was for these kids, the entire staff, the community, from the football game to the dance, I think everybody had an amazing weekend. And um, I'd like to thank everybody that helped out um, decorate at the high school because they turned that cafeteria into MTV, going back into the 80s, and all the adults that helped and assisted, Kelly Sill and her team and um, some students worked all day on Saturday to make those kids just have the best night. So I just want to thank um, the staff and the committee, and um, I think it was a great weekend for Madison. And, and the assembly last week was phenomenal. It was yeah. really very well done, and it was so fun to see uh, the teachers dress up as the 80s, and then they had to judge the different costumes, the, the court. It was a lot of fun. It was a great assembly. It was high energy, and you know what? The kids like the 80s music. They knew the 80s music. Yeah. They were singing along. Yeah. I'm glad I don't have 80s hair anymore. <laughs> yeah, the, the big hair was out. Big uh, hair's gone. During the assembly, big time. Yeah. And a big win for the Blue Streaks. Oh, that oh, was, yeah. was a fun awesome. Yeah. 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 Okay. Reports and recommendations of the treasurer, Michael. Thank you. I have one item that is not on the agenda that I'm really happy that I'm able to pass out tonight. Um, something that I wanted to do, but we haven't really had the time in the treasurer's office to put it together. It's called a popular annual financial report. Um, it's not audited. It presents certain bits and pieces of financial information in what we hope to be an easier to understand format than the financial statements that we're required to present each year. Um, I plan on making these available uh, to anybody that's here tonight that wants one. Um, tomorrow night at the refreshments with the superintendent and then I'm going to ask the library if some can be put in whatever area they have um, make them available at the schools um, so I'm, I'm really happy with the way it came out it was done completely in-house um, my staff and I worked on it 
put the graphs together, you know, did all the layout, did everything on this. So hopefully you'll find it useful, the community will find it useful and informative. So as you read through, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, um, let me know. I hope there's no misspellings, but because we've had everybody in the brother proof it, but that doesn't mean something didn't get biased. Um, but again, I, I want to thank my staff for the effort that they put forward in, in making this happen. And now that we have the format, I anticipate being able to issue one every year. Because um, now we can just drop in, you know, delete and drop in new graphs and new numbers and, and things like that. So, okay, the one item. Thank you, Mike. Yeah, that's really good. The one item on the agenda um, is looking for approval of the financial reports for all funds fund-to-fund fund transfer report and the check payment register for September 2015. So moved. I'll second. Roll call, please. Kelly Tromba? Yes. Larry Armstrong? Yes. Jay Fabian? Yes. Michelle Hayes? Yes. Vote is 4-0. Mike, could you just, in a synopsis small, just tell everybody what's what kind of information they're going to see inside of you? Um, it, it starts with a little letter to the community and our um, organizational chart. One page has revenues and expenditures. The next one has our debt, um, which includes the library debt because we're the fiscal agent for that. A couple of graphs showing where the money comes from, um, definition of some of our terms we use in school finance, a whole page on where the, where the money comes from in different forms, property taxes, state funding, and then the rates, and then kind of where we spend the money, our expenditures per pupil, um, breaking down the tax bills you get on that page and the next page. And then, as you recall, back when we had the, one of the renewals on, we had a financial frequently asked questions. Paired those down that weren't levy related, but still informative and put those on the last page. It's a wonderful tool for us. We get so many questions about finances and it's wonderful to have and the parents would like to see see this too, I'm sure. What I will do is I, I can print it to a PDF and email it to the board and anybody else. I'll, I'll get right. it on our website yeah. and mm -hmm. get it to anybody else who wants one. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of effort went into it. I don't want it just to sit on a shelf and no. read. No, thank you. And um, thank your staff as well. Okay. Report to the administration. Okay. Well, um, one of the things that Jack and I have talked about when we were doing our board meetings is instead of you know bringing a whole bunch of people in to get certificates and then have them leave was to work at having some presentations and as we kick off strategic planning as we talk about a little bit I'm sure we're going to talk a little bit after Julian talks to us tonight a little bit about most likely to succeed <coughs> those of us that went to the movie and talked about bringing a screening here um, to hear our students speak about the types of education and experience they're getting in our schools is a pretty powerful thing. And randomly, we were, Dave and I were at a meeting all oh, about a month ago at Lakeland called for the Charting Academic Pathways group that they're working with because of this career advising policy that every school district has to do. And as part of that um, conversation, they had student presenters. And Julian Perez uh, presented to a room full of 40 adults, right? 40, 50 adults, um, about his experience here in the Madison schools. And we had no idea he was presenting. And he had so many good things to say. I thought to have him speak to the board tonight would be a good way to kick off our different presentations. So. I'm going to turn it over to Julian. He's going to talk about the things he talked about that morning. Um, hi, I'm uh, Julian Perez. I'm a senior at Madison High School. I'm also a senior at Alma Career Center. And uh, what I do there is uh, architecture and project management. And that's a career. Um, what we do there for the junior year, we uh, uh, use AutoCAD uh, to design architectural projects. Um, AutoCAD is the software that we use to make the 2D to 3D of uh, blueprints and plans. I'm going to give you an example of some of the projects 
Julian, you could use this table. All right. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Um, we do residential, and also uh, we actually did uh, work on a commercial building for, I think it was a share for a ferry or a free affair. But no, it definitely was a ferry. And here's a first floor plan. Mm -hmm. Floor. Julian, could you hold that for me so I can zoom in on it? Yeah. Thanks. And those are the 2D uh, floor plans that I was talking about. But we, I also do uh, 3D modeling. So this is like a basic 3D view of what the house would look like. And, um, I have a lot more plans here if you guys would like to look at them. I'm going to pass them around. Yeah. Yeah. Here's uh, the barn that we did for the deputy. That's the first floor plan. This is the section. Yeah, it's actually completed, that project. Um, he, he needs to uh, raise money for it first because uh, it's going to be a really big uh, barn. This is uh, actually a really came out distorted. Wow. Oh my gosh. That's yeah. a huge bar. Thank you. Thank you. Second floor. The basement. The roof. Julian, what sparked your interest in architecture? What, I'm sorry, what? What sparked your interest? Uh, what sparked my interest was uh, freshman year. Um, was actually. I took this class called IED at Madison called Intro to Engineering Design. And I really liked it because what we did, we used uh, AutoCAD Inventor to manufacture, well, to draw up like, uh, like parts. Like we uh, designed a whole train set. We designed an airplane, uh, bits and pieces. We had to make our own, um, like, our own design of like an object that we could use. And what I did was like, I made a, a lightsaber and doubled it, so then it'll be a double uh, lightsaber. And um, <laughs> I really liked it. And then I remember going to uh, the conferences and I was talking to my teacher, Mr. Watt, and he was telling my mom that I could see Julian liking, I, I see Julian that's he was really into the class, so I could see him as an architect. So when he said that, that like sparked my head like, I remember hearing something about uh, architecture art and career center. And then we have uh, Welcome Wednesdays, and I decided to go one day and, talk, and see the class. And it was either between that or horticulture. And I just really liked um, the architecture class because I love the fact that you can be creative with what you do. Uh, that project, the uh, down right there, the pool house, I got, I think, 15th place out of 42nd, because that was a competition for, uh, a, for a pool house competition at the Home and Garden Show in Cleveland. Uh, I went to Columbus for Skills USA um, for talking about, I had to talk about uh, greenhouse efficiency and how you can do that, do that to help your home. And I placed second in state for that. Um, there's just like a lot in this class that you get out of, and I actually only get eight uh, college credits out of the class. I get OSHA certified, um, MCCR certified, that's uh, the National Center for Construction, Education, and Research. Uh, Let me ask you this. Would you rather be sitting in a classroom in a lecture hall, or would you rather be in a classroom where you have hands-on? Definitely hands-on. <laughs> yeah, that's... Uh, it's a really good experience because um, I'm actually like, you get a lot of hands-on experience. Like right out of high school, um, I could go work for a firm and intern. Actually, I'm going to do an internship at Auburn, and I'll be at my desk at Auburn getting paid uh, eight to ten dollars an hour for projects for an architect. Thank you. And uh, but yeah, definitely. If uh, you could, I just want the more kids to know about the Auburn and what they have. Like it's a second like a second choice right. instead of the traditional high school and you go and get actual experience and just be working around the field. I have uh, friends that went there um, 
at the gym really good. They're out working already. Um, I have one for electrical engineering that he came up with his own design. I forget who he's gonna sell it to, but they offered him like 65,000 for the rights. But in general, um, I just really like it and it's a great experience for any kid. What, how did you end your uh, presentation that morning at Lakeland? Because it stuck with me. You said something about somebody very special to you. Oh, uh, my mom. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Make um, sure we get this on tape. Yeah. Your mom. <laughs> um, I really wanted to do this for my mom because I want to like draw her own house and hopefully if I have the money, build it and make it for her and uh, for her to live in with me. I just, I just really care about her. <laughs> well, you could have been a star in the movie we saw last night at Luther's Hall. He could have definitely been right with those kids. Absolutely. Yes. You have a great Absolutely. future, and I thank you for sharing. Thank you. Thank you, thank thank you, you very much. much. So that, that sort of ties into where we're going. You're welcome mm -hmm. to stay for this part of it. And you, you don't have to stay for the rest of this, but we're going to talk a little bit about yeah. um, we'll some of our next steps. So um, you know, Julian is a perfect introduction to talk a little bit about most likely to succeed. And you know, all of you have a copy of the book, and we've read as an administrative team three chapters. I've given a copy to the business advisory council, and uh, some of our parent group parents are going to read it as well. But we would like to hold, have a hosting here in Madison, um, and I'm going to have to pin down some dates. But I think what I'll do is I'm going to send out a separate email tomorrow with all these different dates for strategic planning to try and host the um, to do a showing here because I really would like to get it in before the holidays before winter really hits in so that we have the starting ground obviously the plan wouldn't be finished um, before the holidays but we have that initial visioning session and some conversation around the film prior to the holidays and then the subgroups can work on their goals, bring that back, and, and follow up. And all of that is part of the contract that we're going to enter into with Lakeland. Um, this would be a separate session. And I'd also want to know people that you think you would want to have be a part of that process um, so that we can invite them. Because again, I'd rather over invite so that we get the right amount participating than not have enough participating. But last night, there were six of us that got to see Most Likely to Succeed, and it was a very powerful <coughs> film. I think for me, the, the most disappointing part, and I guess we'll kind of debrief it here, the four of us that were there for you a little bit, is that we didn't get to talk about it. Um, they had a panel discussion talking about it, but if you didn't go home with somebody, and I was lucky because Matt was with me, and we got to talk about it all the way home, um, it was, it's a very powerful film. In fact, today when I was calling to follow up with the um, community uh, producer, is what they call her, because I hadn't seen in my spam filter the actual application to host it, uh, I told her that I think it's a very surprising film because it's about a school called High Tech High, but really they didn't emphasize the tech. They emphasize the humanity of education and and to me that's that's the business we're in um, they didn't talk about online schools they didn't talk they talked about old-fashioned teaching and learning and communication and one of the people last night kept saying this was a new way of teaching it's not a new way of teaching but it's it's circling back to some good practices that have been around for a lot of years, the project-based learning. I mean, Julian talking about it tonight, career tech has been around a long time. And I started in a career tech school, and I learned from those teachers some of the best methods that, I, better than I could have ever learned in a methods class. So it is a very engaging hour and a half film that moves fast. It does have a plot, but it's a documentary. But it really, and it, it leaves you with questions. One of the questions that my husband asked at the end, he goes, I wonder what the, the narrator did with his daughter. 
for school after all that because they show her in a very traditional setting at the beginning and we don't quite know where she she ends up but it is a very powerful um, experience somebody else you guys want to weigh in I think it, it relates to how the world has changed in the last 30 years um, in terms of what's expected of you in, in the in different in different jobs and are we providing our students with experiences that are preparing them for you know what they're going to be stepping into or are we still preparing them for the jobs that were here 40 years ago that are really no longer available so um, it's a it's a great um, it's a great thing to spark a lot of conversation about what we do and I think that's the, the power of this this book and this this movie as a screen the classrooms that we saw in this high-tech school um, were more student-based learning so instead of the teacher teaching to them and then just listening um, the, the students were running the classroom and the discussions and it was wonderful and then at the end of the year like Julian you present a project and your parents come and your whole year, school year is based on the project now it could be something in the arts uh, one of the groups did a play and um, then they had engineering students that were doing um, an actual physical project so what I loved about it was um, it showed us how kids are looking at these tests and teachers are teaching to the tests and all they're doing is trying to beat the tests. So for me, I took away a little sadness because I can see, you know, my daughter's going to take the ACT on Saturday for the second time because she's trying to beat it. She's trying to beat her score. Um, a lot of the testing that the, the, the teachers are doing are, you know, to the state and federal standards. So I feel like we're locked in a lot of times on what we can do in the, in the classroom, but um, the encouraging things are that there are kids in every classroom that have different skill sets. And if we can even do a little bit of what the film showed, we can, you know, make these kids be successful when they leave high school and then in turn leave college and be able to, like Julian, do internships and co-ops and have the skill set to work with others. You know, learning all your math facts <laughs> doesn't help you work with your partner on a project when you get to, you know, a place of employment. So. Um, not that you don't have to know your math books, but um, I just, I, I love the film. Um, I hope we can bring it here. And um, it's 100 years of traditional learning that we've been doing, you know, teaching math, history, English, science. This was very um, awakening. It, 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 like David said, it's, it's what the future looks like. Um, and I hope we can do something close to that, you know, you can't change the whole model, but I hope we can bring some of those ideas here. What do you think, Pat? Well, from a special education perspective, they have students with all different types of abilities, and the, where we all struggle with group projects is how, who does the most work and those controlling people and grades and, you know, how we quantify to give grades and what do grades really mean but they had kids at different ability levels and finding what their strengths were and each person contributed. And there was demonstrations of some, some kids were contributing a little bit more and controlling and, and learning from those experiences. So they showed many different kids and what they took out of these experiences and how they are all lifelong lessons, not just about the actual curriculums. And there were some details in it that were quite interesting on how it came to be that we have grades by age and different rooms for different class. Well, it's just somebody's idea. Yet, we're, we're, we are afraid we get, you know, there's a safety net in running school the way it's always been done. So, 
it, it was there were some interesting facts that they brought along but it's it's a risky and a scary thing for those of us who have been in education to break that mold and yet I don't think you'll find too many people who don't agree that the mold needs to be broken a little bit to, to make school a more engaging and better experience for our kids so I think it'll be worthwhile Julian what kinds of things going through the types of experiences you've had the last couple of years how has that improved you as a person not necessarily what have you learned but what what other kinds of skills have you have you developed through this process um definitely communication um getting to understand other people and how they work and what you do um, to help that with them um that's i'd say I just have a better I just have a better understanding of uh, I'm more conscientious. I, I uh, ever since like I've just been focusing more. Um, like uh, when I was at school, I being with like all those uh, all the kids in one class is really like really hectic. Like there's a lot of noise, a lot of people, uh, a lot of stuff's going on, and being at uh, the Auburn. We have a small classroom, we get our work done, and it's just taught me to be more like, uh, like, not as, like, not as a teenager, actually, like, being an adult, like, being here to do what you want to do and do what you have to do so you can get over with the day. But not like that, but you, I really like it, but it's just, uh, I feel, I feel like I got checked off. I got checked off twice. No, no, I think I think you did real well. I, I think you actually would be a really um, good participant in some of these discussions with us about um, how we could provide some experiences like that within within the schools too. Mm -hmm. Angela, remember the scene where they oh, the Socratic seminary. They put how they this started that class on the board, and mm -hmm. the teacher said he'd like the kids to set the room up like that and he just left the room. So there was a classroom of freshmen, students, all with their little backpacks on, and they sat there, and then they didn't even know if they were allowed to stand up, because usually the teacher's telling them what to do. So they stood there for like five minutes, and then the teacher came back in and he said, I want you to put chairs here and tables here. And they're like, they're just looking at him. You know, you can actually do these things in the classroom. It was so funny. So yeah, he said, "I'm not going to help you. you right. Have to figure it out. You have to figure it out how to set it up." Just and just that, I mean, just shows how they always learn the same way. And it was it was very funny that yeah. first scene. It was great. So I uh, I obviously did not see the, the film, but one of the things that intrigues me about what we try to do in education is is how you, it's a very good question. How did you get interested in drafting and, and that type of thing? And to me, how do you get interest? How does any child get interested in doing anything? And teaching and allowing them to understand and learn from us what all the options are out there, and then select, start heading in a certain direction. Not that it's a it's your exact direction, it's your lifelong direction, but pick a direction and go. Um, there's so many options. There's so many, you know, how many children actually know how their dad makes their money? And even if they know what he does for a living, how does he make his money? Does he bill just because he showed up? Does he bill per hour or per per unit that he, he did or per minute? Um, you know, per, per each little item that he produced, you know, does he get paid at all? You know, uh, overtime and, and, and trying to understand just all that part of the, the, the business, the, the, your employment world, your employment law of lives. I don't know how much of that gets across, how much we're doing in, in education to, to do that. Yeah, we, we want them to get the thinking and that type of thing, but you know, we also need to have them have a, if nothing else, some type of direction, you know, and uh, 
And that's part of that whole exactly. career advising piece of all the state mandates. I believe that this one is probably one of the most meaningful that they have they've put into policy. Mm -hmm. Making us come up with how, how do we help kids get interested in career pathways and how do we give them information? And there's a lot of reasons why it's happening. Um, mm -hmm. I've been to numerous presentations where, you know, obviously the student loan debt that's out there, because the push was for everybody to go to a four-year college for the longest time, versus are there career pathways that may not take that, that direction? because we have a whole lot of people walking out with four-year degrees that are underemployed. And then what what are the jobs that, that need to be done? I got caught um, the other day. We typically think that everybody's going to college. So in this day and age, instead of a trade, and I was at Aurora High School, and a former student um, came up to me, and I'm like, oh, hi, honey, how's, how's school? Well, she just looked right at me and she said, Mrs. Tromba, I'm actually working um, with sheet metal. I have a great paying job and fabulous benefits and um, I, I enjoy it a lot. And I said, good for you, but I just thought, you know, she would have left Madison High School and went to college, you know, um, possibly Lakeland and the and she ran up all job. kinds of debt, right. and, and, and not being able to pay it off. She's doing well and, and loves what she's doing. So um, we have to think, you know, differently about where where kids the choices they'll make um, in the future. So what college? The college debt right now just bothers me. It is huge, it's huge, and it, you know, it's. I think they're looking at ways to help people finish in shorter amount of time so that you're not going for five to seven years you're, you know for your path if that's the direction you're going and start making those decisions before you get into the doors or at least have some ideas of strengths weaknesses and aptitudes and some of the career pathways and things that different organizations are coming up with Lakeland is working on a whole set of things that will talk about different careers under um, various pathways that they offer. Uh, Auburn has a set of pathways. Uh, the LEAF program is offering some advising. So there's there's quite a few options that we have to tie into our plan and our administrators are really embracing it. We had our first meeting last week and we're going to have another one after we get back from OSBA in um, November. And it, this sort of all ties along the parallel tracks of all the things we're looking at as we go into strategic planning. So, thank you, Julian. Thank you. It was you. awesome. Thank you. Thank, thank you for coming. We appreciate, we appreciate it. it. You are free. Thank you. Let's go stay for the rest. <laughs> Thanks, Julian. No problem. Um, so as we as we start to look at strategic planning, because that contract is on here for approval tonight. Like I said, I will send out a list of available dates. I've talked to the facilitator, Dion Dimitro, and so I want to pin down some dates, which would then, you know, determine what date we show the film. Um, but I would like to get that in late next month, early December, before it gets too crazy with the holidays, and then, you know, winter sets in, and hard to get anybody to go anywhere and, and do anything during January and February the way they've been around here. Um, so if that's okay with you, that's how I'm going to proceed with that. Um, I did get a text from Jacqueline, which I was waiting for, which is why I was looking at my phone. Um, we are looking at moving some board meetings next month. One, there's a board meeting on election day. Um, we're looking at, since we're all going to be down at Capitol Conference, not having that meeting uh, on the third um, so and then moving our board meeting on the 17th um, are we talking about moving that meeting or just, just, not, can't, just not canceling, canceling, canceling it okay. yeah. canceling that meeting um, and then moving the meeting on the 17th to monday the 16th if at all possible the reason why is that the kiwanis club is having their organizational kickoff dinner that night and there are so many of us that are a part of that we want to be able to support that group getting them off the ground because it's really going to help our students and our community 
So if we could move that um, yeah. Yeah. to the 16th, we're looking at uh, Monday the 16th. Does that date work for everybody? Okay. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. Looks good here. All right. And we all have tickets then available for that dinner on the 17th at Grand River if uh, any of you would like to come or would like to join Kiwanis. That was a very smooth transition. Wasn't that? You on that? Hey, I'm all about, you know, building uh -huh. up that membership. Uh, I know Devin uh, Arts, the president, is going to be contacting each of you asking for if you're interested in joining the Kiwanis Club. It is a really, and Nancy's a part of it, it's a really neat group. It's a very diverse group of people, uh, all sorts of age ranges, occupations, but they're really passionate about giving back to the community and, and service. And, it, and the two young leaders, you know, Mike Baker and Devin Arts, they're, they're, they're stepping up and they've got a lot of ideas, so it's, it's good. And as also, we're having a, a meat raffle, is that what we're calling it? I think we're off for $5 a ticket. You could win $50 50 worth of meat. Pounds, 50, 50 pounds, 50 pounds, 50 pounds. I get that mixed up. 50 pounds of meat from Ben oh, so We also are selling those. So. <laughs> we have lots of options. <laughs> I love that. But so the, those were uh, tying into the Kiwanis. Now, to tie into some other pieces of uh, business, we did get another tip, and I will present it to you so that you have it. Um, it is on, oh, she got the staple of these. Oh, yes, she did. For whatever reason, our copier is stapling on the bottom. So, you are, uh, that looks on Circle K. Yeah, the Circle K and Aldi. So, I just wanted you to have it, so, was that the original one? Yeah, that's the original. That's the original? Yeah. That's my original. Oh, is it? Maybe not. No, no, it's not. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I just know I have to sign that I received it. Um, so I just wanted to share it with you. It is at 50%. Um, you know, I wrote the letter on the last one. Right. We got a response back. Yeah. Um, they reminded us they could tip at 75 percent. Do they contact us every time? Yes. They have yes, to yes. inform the district. By letter or by phone call? They did it by letter. Uh, I think they have to do it by letter. Yeah. Yeah. Because Angela has to sign up that she received notification. That's, that's that. Um, couple other things we are officially now both of our buildings are lead certified we are done with the lead certified process for the south elementary and madison middle school we does we are a silver lead certified in both buildings meaning we jumped through the hoops to make it as green as we possibly could um i don't think we got the highest i think we got the middle designation but I, we have a certificate for each building, which I think we'll put in the main office to show um, we are silver certified. And I really, I saw at Lakeland when I was there for a meeting, what that des designation means for a building. And I might see if I can get something like that so people understand what we're doing for the environment as a result of getting this designation. One of, one of the things in the, so in the committee there that, that they had, we had to have public transportation well, that's pretty difficult. I mean, right. regular public transportation, and that you know, right. out here in Madison and right. in Lake County doesn't have that. So that's one of those things that may have taken you from the if it was gold up right. to right. the silver. You know, you couldn't quite we couldn't reach it because our right. community area doesn't have it. No. So, but you know, there was a you know a lot of work that went into that. Yeah. Achieving that status, mm -hmm. uh, and then the last piece of information that also saved us money, correct? Or allowed us to get, get to get more money. That's what I remember. Either it helped yeah. us at an interest rate, or or if it there was a. I know certain parts cost a little more, mm -hmm. um, but an energy efficient building will save us yeah. money on utilities. 
I mean, that's, and that's what they were trying to encourage. Yeah. But if you didn't meet, the, meet it, then they were going to had to do something. But that's that. Yeah, I'm not sure what the OCC says. You know, they may have said the project had to become LEED certified. If not, I, I don't know what the town right. is. But I don't know if there was ever a discussion not to go after LEED certification. Oh, we, we, yeah, we wanted to. Yeah. And I knew that. Yeah. Um, and then the last thing I have, and I shared that in the newsletter, is that we have some you know raw percentages from last spring's test. Overall, pretty much where I expected us to come in for this first round of testing plus the first round of testing that's going to be redone by another testing company so there's going to be changes even more because you aren't going to have 10 hours of testing so just by not having that testing drain and you know Joe who, who gave the test to fourth graders could tell that those kids probably by the end weren't as sharp as they were at the beginning for the amount of hours we tested so by lessening the number of hours I think the results will be you know competitive but I think one of the points in that whole book is that if you're doing core sound instruction, you don't have to teach to the test. Kids will have the skills necessary to perform well on the test. And so that, that's part of our conversation. So I, I did share those with you in the update last Friday. And there are some areas, though, where we do have some alignment issues with some various subjects at the high school that we're going to need to look at. But Will you be doing a letter again to parents, Angela, telling them about the testing? Because I thought that was great. More people knew about what was going on in the classroom with the testing when you sent the letter. Oh, we had. absolutely can. And you know, I think since we have a round happening in December for the high school, we should do that. It just and the gives change. everybody a heads up of what's happening. Right. You know, and, and um, some of those I changes. I appreciated it. Okay. We definitely And I think we didn't have as many issues as other districts had with opt outs because, you know, we sort of just what it was. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be okay. And but you told me about the testing yep. ones. I thought it was great. So I think we can definitely do that again. Okay. And I think then that is everything from my report. So, Dave. I want to talk about a product called Public School Works. Um, Angela mentioned it in her Friday newsletter. It is a, um, a district safety product. Uh, the, the main feature of this product, and, and it's something that we'll pay for annually, um, the main feature is web-based safety training. Um, this year we're also using a, a help ticket um, system for technology and for maintenance. So if our teachers encounter an issue, they, they go into this system and report it, and the appropriate people will be able to respond in a timely manner. But I want to talk about the safety training. Uh, it went live this past week in our district, and uh, let me just tell you a little bit about why we're using it um, and what, the, what it will do for us. There are a number of state and federal requirements uh, for training for any employees within a, within a school district. And the traditional way that we've been able to offer that is after school training for folks. And that's hit or miss, you know, who attends, who has you know, this going on or is out that day and trying to get everybody compliant with the training is next to impossible. This program is web-based, um, people log in there's a unique login for each employee. They take courses that are appropriate for what they do. So we enter their, their particular job within the district and they're enrolled in the, the proper courses. Uh, the course looks like a, oftentimes it's a PowerPoint with audio um, or it might be a video with audio and you watch the, the course and then when you're finished you click to take a test and the tests are usually 10 questions um, you go through and if you pass the test, you are fully compliant for that particular training. Uh, if you did not pass the test, you can go back in and try again. And there's not really a penalty um, for not passing. There's a penalty, I guess, for not completing the courses ultimately. But, What's an um, example for a course? Um, the, the biggie is um, 
it's a child abuse and violence prevention series of courses. It's five modules within our program. It's four hours worth. And that's going to be spread between two, uh, two enrollment windows throughout the year. And that, that looks at things like suicide prevention, um, recognition of, of signs of abuse and things like that. And our teachers will, will participate in all of that. Um, we also do things like uh, fire safety. We do bloodborne pathogen um, training. Um, there are some notifications that folks ha are supposed to get annually that uh, they just sign off on that they've gotten these notifications. So, um, and then there's there's other things depending on our custodians do, um, you know, hazardous materials types of training, and our high school science teachers who work in a lab have to do some different trainings. Um, so it, it varies from from position to position. Um, the nice thing is folks have about a 60-day window to complete roughly two hours worth of training in a, in a, in a shot. Um, they can kind of come and go as, as they please. And once they've completed the test successfully, we have, um, we have an electronic record that every employee has completed the test successfully. And um, there most likely will come a time when state auditors will ask us for proof that we're providing this, and that our employees have it. And we can simply print a report. It's, it's right there. Um, I, I rolled it out. I went building to building to staff meetings and shared what it is and what they were going to get. Um, staff has, has accepted it. I have not heard too many complaints um, directly to me. Um, and it's interesting because we rolled it out. Um, and. We rolled it out on Thursday. Thursday staff received an email with login instructions. And as of this afternoon, 15 people were completely done uh, throughout the district. So uh, I think that's pretty good for just a couple of days. I think you ought to track on who, who has it done early, <laughs> midtime, no. about three quarters, <laughs> and at, at the, the last three days. Well, to me, that sends a message also you know, because th this is a type of, if we're teaching children to be on top of this type of thing and not to pro prolong things, I'm a, pro I'm a type of person that I'm going to take care of it immediately. Mm -hmm. I always take the toughest things first and leave the easy stuff at the end, you know, versus, uh, and just because I want to make sure it's done, you know, and if I have, and to me, that there's a big mindset there. But adults and, aren't I'm not worried about that. I'm, I'm worried about what, I, what we're teaching our children. And if adults are procrastinators, they're going to teach procrastination. No, you could be a no, 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 I'm telling you, no, I'm telling you, <laughs> that's, it's, that's what it comes back to. Well, now, if you have a dirty room at home, you're going to, you're going to have a, a dirty, dirty room you know, later on. And, and you're going to be you're dirty gonna, in your own mind. Are you going to argue with me? What are you going to argue with me about this? I have yeah. a question. You've got a dirty room. You're a procrastinator. you got a dirty room. Question. I don't uh, teach people to be dirty. Was, was there testing prior to this, or was it just in-service training? It was mostly in-service training. And we don't need to use the tests. So, for example, if Pat Smith wanted to have a meeting with his custodians, he could actually use the video portion of that and just show it with them and have a discussion and move on. Um, frankly, the tests aren't... aren't um, not real hard, but I mean, no. do you think it's, it makes people pay more attention or pay closer attention to the subject? I, I, would, like say, I would say, yeah. I mean, you have to pick, you have an accountability measure at the end. Because they're looking at, you know, board policies, you know, the, and the harassment, the bullying, you know, you're, you're clicking off that you're, you've read and you've acknowledged these policies. Um, and I think for, you know, a central office that is as tightly administratively staffed as we are, when we had to plan those trainings, we were behind on some of those mm -hmm. for years. It's easy. Because we had so many things going on. This keeps us current. It keeps us on a cycle. We can automatically know that when a new employee comes in, we'll give them those modules. They'll be on a five-year cycle because that's, you know, most... Child abuse is a five-year cycle, so it will it will help with all of that. I think with the changes in the pupil activity permits that the state has now handed down, saying that we have to keep track of all where they the coaches used to have to submit all that training mm -hmm. to the state. They're now saying the district has to keep track of all that training. <laughs> that change came down in the last couple weeks, 
So I can see this being as a vehicle to keeping track of some of those trainings that are mandatory for the people. And, if, and if they're not, we're the ones liable, not them. Well, guess what? We got to make sure that we're on top of it, or else we're exactly. the. So, so we need to make sure that if, if that if if they're behind on this stuff, if they're a day late, procrastinators. <laughs> if they're a day late, they get disciplined. Well, there is a, there's a built-in system that starts sending notifications as we approach the, the, the final week of the training period. Um, well, it, it gives it, mm -hmm. we, we, define, we define the window mm -hmm. and say complete it within this window. Yep. Yep. Complete it within that window, yep. it's all good. Yep, it's all good. And if not, then what? They can't discipline is, is this Yes, they can. Company? Is this a private company or is it this? Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a private company. Another, another nice thing about this is they they keep us updated as new requirements come out. We have a couple courses that are kind of curious. Um, we didn't really know about them, but they're you know ones a federal a federal requirement notification. We probably most districts that don't have a product like this would never have done that, even though you're supposed to now. Um, it, it's kind of nice because as changes come along, this this organization, which is based in Ohio, but it's a it's a national company, they will um, they will keep us up up to date, keep us current. Did we find this, or did they sell us this? Um, I had heard about it when Katie Tapko was here, and it was one of those projects that I just couldn't take on one more thing. So when Dave got hired, I said, first first thing you need to do is help get us current on all these trainings. And I know Public School Works is a good product. And he goes, I have experience with that. So he had firsthand experience actually rolling it out in Painesville City. And so it, it, it has been a very smooth transition. Um, you know, the teachers, teachers are supportive of it. And we, honestly, I think we're pleasantly surprised they, they've embraced it as, as quickly and as well as they have. So, you know, because change on anything is tough, but this this keeps us current, and I'm very, very excited by it. And Dave has done an awesome job getting it organized, sharing it out at all the staff meetings, and you know, informing people. So the next group that we're going to work with then is our classified staff. The question that you know, the, the problem that we run into, there's a liability involved here. So my question is to to our our treasurer here, with our insurance plans, insurance policies, are we covered? For our negligent or our negligent em employee that doesn't do the training that we say they're supposed to do, and we give them all these windows and we spoon feed them, but they still don't do it, are we covered th with insurance? Our employees are going to take the training. Maybe. Well, I know that, whether, but to, whether that's, it's that's, online, whether it's spoon fed, whether we drag them into a room and force them to watch the video, our employees will take the training. Right. If they don't, if they miss it by a day or five days or ten, five months. How do we handle that? We're not going to let that happen. No, we won't let my, that happen. My experience, yeah, so therefore, therefore, your job is on That's the line? My experience was that that did not happen, and really the built-in safeguards are... It happened in my company all the time, and, and, and it was my fault. We got, well, with the, the email notifications, when they would go out, I would usually get emails, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot, I'm going to get them mm -hmm. in, mm -hmm. and they'd had that week, and that's when the principals would start making personal visits and reminding, and my experience is that at that point, those last few holdouts get them in and get them done so okay. that's okay. that's what I'm hanging my hat on. Yeah they work they work teachers are very deadline driven and you know, they, mm -hmm. they meet those deadlines mm -hmm. they do. Okay. 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 Very, I'm, very I'm protecting the public. <laughs> I'm protecting no. us. I'm protecting I, the I public. Got, okay. I, I got you. My job, that's my job as a leader. Well, yes oh, I know that. Oh, that's right. Right. I think Oopsie is next. I think yes. that was everything. Did you have anything else you're doing? No, not unless there are any other questions. Okay. So we are up to Oopsie ratification. Uh, we have settled with Oopsie. Uh, so it is, you know, I'm very excited by that. Um, two successful negotiations. They ratified yesterday. So we are asking for you to enter into uh, an the collective bargaining negotiations with the Madison Local Board of Education pursuant to Article 8 of the Master of Contract currently in effect and the provision of ORC Chapter 417 for the success for ma Master Contract. And we rat they ratified on October 19th a tentative agreement and we're asking you to uh, 
uh, ratify the agreement tonight that would be in effective from July 1st, 2015 through June 30th, 2016. So moved. I'll second. Larry Armstrong? Yes. Jay Fabian? Yes. Michelle Hayes? Yes. Kelly Tromba? Yes. Vote is 4 0. Right. And then moving into my recommendations this evening, I am asking for your approval <coughs> of the following employment contracts. Uh, the following substitute teachers as approved by the <coughs> County Educational Service Center and or Madison Local School District Assistant Superintendent under a one year limited substitute teacher contract for the 2015-16 school year, beginning with Ray Ann Atkins and ending with Robert Woods. To employ Heather McAmis as high school Spanish teacher under a one-year limited uh, contract prorated with an effective date of August 27, 2015 at the rate of compensation of 35,071.75 uh, and the applicable fringe benefits. And the following persons each uh, under a casual day-to-day -day substitute contract at the board approved rate of compensation effective the 2015-16 school year beginning with Erica Shaw and ending with Marcia Errett, and to increase the administrative exempt latchkey and public preschool employees' wages by 1.3% effective at the beginning of their 2015-16 contract year, and to increase the employee contributions equal those paid by the district bargaining unit members effective November 1st, 2015. And then we're asking you to recall the following employee, Ann Fleischer is an educational assistant cafeteria at North Elementary School, effective October 20th, 2015. Any questions? Can I have a motion? I'll move. I'll second. Michael? Jay Fabian? Yes. Michelle Hayes? Yes. Kelly Tromba? Yes. Larry Armstrong? Yes. Vote is 4 0. And my next item is the resolution declaring Red Ribbon Week. Uh, you know, as the annual Red Rail Ribbon Celebration will be observed across America during the Red Ribbon Week, October 23rd through the 31st, and it offers the community members the opportunity to demonstrate their commitment to healthy, drug-free lifestyles. I will move. Second. Mike. Michelle Hayes? Yes. Kelly Tromba? Yes. Larry Armstrong? Yes. Jay Fabian? Yes. Vote is 4-0. And we're asking for your approval of the second uh, reading and final approval of the following board policy updates, beginning with 1130 conflict of interest and ending with 9211 district support organizations. And as oh, I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. And I just, as um, I said at the last meeting, most of these were to update with federal law. Motion? I'll move. I'll second. Kelly Tromba? Yes. Larry Armstrong? Yes. Jay Fabian? Yes. Michelle Hayes? Yes. Vote is 4 0. And under the consent calendar this evening, we have several items. Uh, to approve an agreement between Madison Local Schools and Lakeland Community College to provide facilitation services for the strategic planning process, as found on file in the board office. To approve a contract between the Madison Local Schools and Stephanie Evanoff during the 2015-2016 school year for transportation of the student to care as a mentor. And to enter into the five-year lease agreement with the Madison Softball Association to utilize the Bennett Road property for the purpose of community recreation effective January 1st, 2016 through December 31st, uh, 2020 at the cost per dollar a year and under the terms and conditions found in the board, file in the board office. I'll move. I'll second. Question. Yes. Regarding the, the Bennett Road property, uh, uh, what if we want to sell it two years from now? I, there is an out clause in there. There is? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Do we have That's to pay we them? Okay. That'd, that'd be a good thing. Yeah. The sense. only question I have about that mm -hmm. is, um, and, and I think I recall from before, that they are completely responsible for the maintenance. Yes, they, not? they are. Yeah. They thought because they had come into a little money, in fact, that came up in a series of emails. I said, well, I would have to charge you so much at the hourly rate of whoever it was that would be maintaining it. And she said, we don't have that much money. I said, she goes, we'll continue to maintain the property. 
I just have one question about the transportation. Is that just a private individual transporting somebody? It's a parent. Just a parent. Okay. I just wasn't sure how that worked. Usually it's such and such company or Larry, <coughs> excuse me, Larry Armstrong? Yes. Jay Fabian? Yes. Michelle Hayes? Yes. Kelly Tromba? Yes. Vote is 4 0. <coughs> At this time, um, any member of the audience, you know, if you'd like to have public participation, participation. Um, okay. <laughs> and do we have any need for executive? Then I need a motion to adjourn. So moved. I'll second. Thank you. Jay Fabian? Yes. Michelle Hayes? Yes. Kelly Tromba? Yes. Larry Armstrong? Yes. Vote is 4 0. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.